Greetings, Chavos. Today, we're Chavos on the road. We're headed to downtown San Francisco to pick up a Dia de los Muertos treat, pan de muerto. So, for those of you who don't know, Dia de los Muertos is a celebration every November 1st and 2nd, all throughout the country of Mexico. Now, there's many things you're supposed to do to celebrate this. Of course, it's a time for remembrance of family members or friends who've passed away. But there's also some key things that you're supposed to get. And one is this sweet bread called pan de muerto. We're almost at the pickup spot for the bread. Now you might think we're in San Francisco's Mission District, which is the Latin cultural area of the city. And while there are a lot of Mexican bakeries there, I'm actually picking up from a home baker. You see, sometimes the bread at these bakeries can be sitting there for some days, so I really wanted a nice fresh bread. So I found out online, actually on Facebook, that there's this woman baking fresh pan de muerto, and we're gonna go pick up a half dozen. We got the pan de muerto. They're headed to the trunk for now. I'll show you when we get home. Next up, time to get some marigolds. Got the marigolds. So, what's with all the shopping? Well, it's all in honor of the Day of the Dead, which is actually not a single day, but three days starting at the end of this month, October. The 31st is when the children make altars to Angelitos. These are altars like this one, which are meant to make the spirit of deceased children come back for a visit. November 1st is All Saints Day. This is when spirits of any age are intended to come back to visit. And then finally on November 2nd, that's All Souls Day. That's when families go to the graveyard and decorate the graves. In Spanish, these altars are called ofrendas. Here's the one we made for Abuelita Rosita. You'll see first and foremost, we have the marigolds. This is a special type of flower that for many different cultures has a connotation with the sun and the spirits of the dead. It's meant to bring them back with us. And that's the primary piece to our altar. Below we have the pan de muerto. This is the one I just picked up in the city. I've yet to try it and I will do so in a second with all of you. Next to that, we have some items that were meaningful to Rosita. We have a candle with the Virgin of Guadalupe and we have a little espresso cup which is the color Rosita, or pink. Um, that was her nickname, and she really loved coffee. She was from a region of Mexico where coffee was very popular, so that's one of the special items we have on this altar. Even though we're not currently in Mexico, we're still able to celebrate along. There's a large Mexican-American population in San Francisco, and in the Mission District, if you're there during the Day of the Dead, you can see many altars along the streets that different families have put together. No matter whether you're in Mexico or San Francisco, there are two key food items you're supposed to enjoy. Number one is pulque, that's a type of drink. And number two is the pan de muerto, which we're gonna have in a second. Now, you'll notice I didn't pick up any pulque. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Essentially, it's a lightly fermented beverage made from the agave plant. So, for those of you who don't know, agave is actually the plant that they make tequila and mezcal from, but you can also make a lighter type of beverage called pulque. For me, I think I'm gonna leave it in the history books, and instead, let's check out this pan de muerto. To me, it looks absolutely delicious. Nice golden brown with this powdered sugar all over. Now, she literally made it fresh today for me. In the morning, you're able to come to her home and pick up the baked goods. And then after 2 p.m., she goes out and does deliveries throughout the city. So, let's give it a try. It's very nice. It sort of has an orange flavor to it. That orange flavor is very common. Often people flavor this with either orange flower water or orange zest, which is the outside of the fruit. Other varieties will actually put anise for flavoring, but I don't taste any of that here. This is super fresh. It was literally baked this morning and I'm loving it. I think I'm gonna have a coffee with Rosita. 
So as you can see, Pena Muerto is not just for the deceased. It's also very much for the living, and it's a fun treat this time of year. Like many cultures around the world, there's certain baked goods in Mexico for certain times of year. While here, during the Day of the Dead, you have Pena Muerto, in January, you have something called Orozca de Reyes. That's a special type of bread intended for Three Kings Day. Within it is a small plastic baby Jesus. And whoever finds that, assuming you're splitting it with your family, needs to buy tamales for everyone on Candlemas on February 2nd. While we have our humble little altar here in San Francisco, Day of the Dead is a much bigger spectacle in Mexico City. For those of you who saw the 2015 James Bond film Spectre, you might remember the opening scene was this massive parade where James Bond is fighting through the crowd to foil a terrorist plot. What you might be surprised to hear is that the Day of the Dead is a celebration not just in Mexico, but in everywhere from Belize to Brazil to Peru. No matter where you are around the world, I hope this video inspired you to consider celebrating the Day of the Dead in your own special way. It can be deeply meaningful to spend a day or three to give some remembrance to those who've passed away in your life. Ending on a positive note, thank you to everyone who's been watching and loving my latest videos. I hope you enjoy the content I've been putting out, and I'll see you guys next time for more great content about Mexico City and the country of Mexico as a whole. See ya, chavos. Peace.